if I could simplify my soloing approach, is play something pretty, play something ugly, play something <laughs> melodic, play something bluesy, and just There's keep alternating. <laughs> <laughs> Today I have something very special for you guys. My friend Tim Pierce is going to bestow upon us his wisdom as one of the greatest session guitar players to ever do it. It's such a pleasure to know Tim and this song that we're working on together is my tune called Into the Dark. It's from my album Lotus which you can stream. Link in the description if you'd like to hear this song and all the songs from the album. But maybe some of you guys who've been here for a while remember when I broke down Dave Grohl's breakdown of his song Everlong. It was the origin story of how he wrote the song and I thought it was just an incredibly inspiring conversation sort of interview with himself. You guys thought it was cool too. It was a very popular video on my channel and it inspired me to create some original music and you know this was years ago. I just created this sort of throwaway track and I didn't think much of it beyond what I normally do with YouTube videos which is just create a composition and it sort of just exists at the end of a YouTube video somewhere. Well, Tim heard the track that I made and wanted to use it for a demonstration device for whatever concept he was talking about in one of his videos. So he soloed over it in his video and I just put that track on the back burner and I'm to a point now where I'm creating my own original music and playing it live, adding that into what I do here on YouTube. And what I do here on YouTube is teach and this is a very teachable, this might be one of the most educational videos I've ever made. I thought it was only fitting to revisit this track as my album came together and asked Tim Pierce, hey Tim Pierce, my buddy, my pal, my guy, please would you play a guitar solo for me? It would be an honor and of course Tim said yes because he's the best. And I'm sure some of you saw the video when I went to Los Angeles and bought a new guitar with Tim's help. Well that guitar had a purpose and that purpose was to lay down the best guitar solo of the year, maybe ever. Okay, I'm definitely being hyperbolic, but it's a good guitar solo. Did you realize you could justify buying a guitar because you need it for a guitar solo? So we brought it back to Tim's house after the guitar store and let's pick up there. We have opted for a string change maximum tonal capacity. And this is a man who's changed a string or two in his day. Mr. Tim Pierce. <laughs> I have more than, it's, I've heard it said, it's like kind of like the doing the dishes of the guitar. What is something people don't know about changing strings that you can enlighten them about? Well, you can cut them all off at the same time if you want, and you, you actually shouldn't leave that much um, of a wind, I don't think, but you know, these opinions would probably be negated by some experts out there on YouTube, so... I don't know. I just... I do a turn. It's always on the inside. I leave about an inch and a half of winding. always do it different. Like this time I did three at a time. Mm-hmm. So that works. What are those settings? <laughs> yes, what were those settings? That tone sounded sweet. I guess I should have checked, but we're gonna get into the meat of the video now. Tim's going to first go through his solo that he has in his head. He's already had a chance to get acquainted with the track. Previously, this is a great way to work virtually, but luckily I happen to be here in the room to produce him, as if he needs any help from me. But hey, it is my music. I'd like to have some input on it. And that's honestly the best part of this video, is how to extract greatness out of somebody who's clearly a master of what they do. There's just insanely valuable information ahead. I'm gonna shut up now and let you get to Tim's first take, which actually isn't even a take at all because we didn't press record. He's just getting levels and it already sounds like this. So you okay with the shape of this solo? Oh, I'm okay with the shape of that solo, Tim. And this is important. As a session guitar player or musician, you have to ask the artists that you're working with what they want up front. You want to be proactive in how you communicate because you don't want to go through pouring your heart and soul into a concept and then after the fourth or fifth take, the artist says, That was pretty good. Um, can you do something completely different? different though. That can really um, mentally, if nothing else, be a little taxing. So you don't want to waste anybody's time, especially your own. So let's get to it. Tim's first actual take.
what I establish here is I have anchors. So I have a few places that I know I'm going to go, mm -hmm. and then a few places where I have no idea what I'm going to do. And that gives me the kind of confidence to always have like a stone to step on in the river, but then in between those stones, I can kind of just fly. And even this fast lick, it's different every time. <laughs> And it just kind of turns out the way it turns out, but I know I'm going to start with that approach in that particular spot. It's almost like he, these licks are intervals, if that makes sense. It's like yeah. instead of targeting the nine, I'm targeting this little thing. And like... Right. So Tim and I are talking about the same thing here, which is using licks as different anchor points across the guitar neck to get from one place to the next, as opposed to using music theory to get around. In the heat of the moment, any great musician is going to tell you that they're not thinking about music theory if it's something that they know. The tools are in the trunk and I hope I never need them. Somebody said, Victor Wooten said that to me. Theory is a tool. And like riding in a car, the tools are in the trunk. They're not in the passenger seat. I hope I never need the tools. So you're not thinking about theory, you're thinking about these different licks that you're familiar with to use as little points on a map and let your feel take over in between and that's what makes it human. I abandoned my everything. Yes. That's just, that was totally spontaneous. That was so, a new path. That's cool too. That was a bit too loud in the track. That's the other thing that's really important. If you're too low in the track, you sound small. You're not going to get inspired. But if you're too loud in the track, you'll race ahead of the drums. I loved that, so I'm gonna punch in. Yes. So just in case you don't know what punching in means, punching in means when you're recording something and you're happy with the first part of a take, you don't like the second half perhaps, so you'll punch in and record over that second half and create a compilation or a comp track that represents two different takes compiled together. Some guitar players will tell you you have to play everything in one take and some guitar players will say, I play one note at a time and cut them all up. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's maybe a more authentic way and a more modern way, but but I like the way that feels the best and the most organic and you know I, I listen to somebody who's smarter than me. You know I've been in this doing the studio for years. You you paint with the multi-tracks. A, a lot of our favorite records were done just a bit at a time. Nothing wrong with that. You can do it both ways. Okay so before I play you this take I want to let you know we used a lot of this for the final guitar solo that ended up on the song. I wish I had a camera on me when he played it. We both looked at each other. My face was probably like this. of that descending arpeggio, that was it. Before I was trying to do the fastest thing I could. So, you know, that was just more of a like, oh, I'm going to do it slow this time. I'm going to keep that one. All right, we're really cooking now. And at this point, Tim is going to switch it up per my request just to give us a different approach because I feel like we already have something great on our hands, but we're not done yet. I'm deviating a lot, you know? know. So I know what you're thinking. Dude, that 
was the solo you should have used on your song. You should have used that entire thing. No comps, nothing. That's it. This is the fun of making your own music and, and creating guitar solos in this way in particular. It's not always the most flashy or fancy or impressive thing that ends up making it on the final track. And as you'll see, those ideas were exactly what we're going for, but maybe just slightly different than what I hear in my head. Considering the entire track, it'll make sense to you when you hear it, but it's so fun to capture Tim's greatness on camera because listen to this lick again. Yeah, both of those for me, I mean, if you said we're done, we're done. I mean, I was very proud of both of those. Those are, yeah, I'm basically at this point, it's gravy. Yes, as I mentioned there, we're done at this stage, but I'm in Tim Pierce's house and all his stuff set up and I'm me. I'm gonna push him a little bit further just to see if I can harvest a little more gold out of that mountain. And Tim is so gracious that he won't tell me, hey, we're done now, son. Yet. for the oh, fast the swell you have to do, do that. okay well I'll keep we'll keep the swell as you can see it already paid off that take wasn't usable but the swell the idea that we'll come back to in subsequent takes is going to greatly impact the final guitar solo as you'll see but we could have just ended prior to that and we didn't we kept going phenomenon where I've peaked and now I'm in a little bit of a valley mm -hmm. and this is nothing to be concerned about but it happens if you do like 12 solos often some of the ones in the middle might be oh I'm not quite doing it as well I've been through this a million times in my life so let's see if I can get out of this valley Yeah, that last lick is absolutely going to be the end of the guitar solo, and at this point we're done, we're overdone. But I wanted to give you guys the most footage, the most thought process possible of a true master at work, Tim. Such a great guitar player, a great teacher, just a great guy, and I hope you enjoyed this. I have to play you this one studio moment. This was Tim going about 180 miles an hour when the speed limit was maybe like 55, and... <laughs> Is there a way to edit this to where we can be done now? Or do yeah. you, yeah, okay, good. We're good. done. Okay, good. Yep, so that's how a very humble, legendary man says, okay, we're done now. So the last thing to do here is to just play you the final comped up take. We only end up using two and a half, sort of two and a half takes, but the roadmap Tim was sticking to the entire time, it was just pick your poison. And that is the beauty of working with an amazing session musician is you can just say, ah, this, ah, make a slight adjustment. It's almost like adjusting a guitar pedal, but it's a human being. <laughs> That's the joy of working with someone like Tim. I've learned a lot from him. So uh, I thank you guys for your support and checking out this song and my new album worked really hard on it and I'm happy to have it out in the world for you and I can't wait to see what comes next. Mm -hmm.